Seven, four. Well, number 144 and then number 74. Oh, be still, thou soul of mine. Thou art not forsaken, though the powers of sin may reign. Thou shalt be unshaken. He who gave his life for thee, thus permits that thou shouldst be. Yeah. 
Oh, how sweet the blessed consolation. And though I fall asleep, I shall wake eternally. In his likeness with his great There's a city of gold in that land far away with its streets and its buildings so rare. the city of love in that land for a Peace. 
on the next page 115 did I hear another number also all right and sing number 115 and then number 96 mighty to save and mighty to keep race like the ocean boundless and deep will you believe it Will you receive it, life everlasting greed? Glory to God, I know I say, this is a blessing I have prayed. Now I'm happy, joyful in glory, reigning. Now I am 
number 96 was called. Who oh, but the Christian is happy and free, filled with the glory of God. None in creation so happy as he, washed and redeemed in the wonderful blood. Jesus, so one in my sorrows hath healed, thou art the one whom my spirit has seen. Only thy glory from heaven reveal, only thy favor and happiness heal. Who but the ransom can ever rejoice over the billows of time? Grace all abounding and hope gentle voice, glad in their spirits that never free pride. Jesus, the one who my sorrows have healed, Thou art the one who my spirit has sealed. Only thy glory from heaven revealed, Only thy favor and happiness yield. How can a mortal and better of sin Taste of a freedom divine? Only where Jesus is dwelling within, comfort and liberty truly may shine. Jesus, the one in my sorrows that feel, thou art the one in my spirit has seen. Only thy glory from heaven reveal, only thy favor can happiness heal. Nothing of the pleasures that see, cold under roses of pride. None but the holy and innocent see, out of the bosom where pleasures abide. Jesus, the one in my sorrows have healed, thou art the one in my spirit. Glory from heaven revealed, only thy favor can Good morning. It's wonderful to be here today. I have a, at least one announcement, a little adjustment to our schedule. There's been a uh, expression that they'd like to have a uh, baptism uh, before Saturday, so we will plan to have a baptism Wednesday immediately following lunch. Um, it would probably be about one. Uh, 15 or something like that, so I know not everyone will be finished with lunch, but um, at least the baptism is, will be close by. So there'll still be one Saturday, uh, but if anyone else would like to be baptized on Wednesday, I want you to know that uh, that'll be available. Um, I was thinking as we were singing this morning um, of Psalm 133 says behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity it's like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. I appreciate the blessing of life forevermore. And notice where it was commanded. It was commanded on the place, the atmosphere, where brethren could dwell together in unity. And I believe that's what the Lord wants to prevail in our assemblies 
And we've heard about um, the unity that God has designed for us. And it should be like uh, anointing oil that would be poured on the top and go all the way down to the skirt. It'd be like dew that covers everything. I don't know how many of you have had experiences of being out doors when the dew fell. Um, I had an experience as a young boy um, after a work day we went to spend the night at my friend's house and uh, his work day at the Myrtle campgrounds <clears throat> many years ago and we went there and hot summertime <clears throat> we didn't have air conditioning in that house so we decided to sleep out in the yard and uh, we slept out in the yard and during the course of the night of course the uh, temperature dropped and we were covered and there's nothing like waking up knowing that the dew has fell on you uh, we were covered completely and I believe that's the picture that the Lord wants us to get of how he wants the unity to prevail amongst his people across everyone so maybe it'd be time for us to go to prayer this morning are there are there Thanksgiving this morning any Thanksgiving you'd like to share
have a song on my heart. <clears throat> I don't know if I can sing it. Well, I think you all can help me. It's a very familiar song. <clears throat> I think of all the trials and the different things different ones are going through. But we're so thankful that we serve in a God who is real. A God who hears and answers prayer. A God who cares and he's more than able to take care of all of our needs. It's just for us to hold fast, to believe, not to limit him by our unbelief, but to hold steady and wait on him. Amen. <clears throat> Please help me sing. When the storms of life assail, take me through. Lord, I know you will not fail. Take me through. I am weak, but thou art strong. Hear my prayer, give me a song. Savior, shield me from all wrong and take me through. Take me through, dear Lord. Take me through. Take me through, dear Lord. Take me through. Though the path so rugged be, Thank you. 
you have a song by the help of the Lord, I ask that you sing with us if you know the song. You want to hear the story of how I made it through when life is full of trouble, pain and fear. The answer may seem simple, though everything else crumbles. One thing has remained through all Good morning. Uh, my name is Daryl Johnson. I am formerly of Dallas, Texas, currently of Sacramento, California. Some good saints out in California, so y'all can come and see us. All right. Thank the Lord for the privilege and opportunity to preach His Word. And to not only preach His Word, but to live by His Word. It's the thing that has changed my life more than anything else in the world. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for his faithfulness. Desire that you pray for us and with us as we 
share with you the Word of God. I want to read a couple scriptures that I want to kind of put as the foundation. Uh, if we're going to talk about what we're we give a title to this discourse, it's going to be that that they may be healed, that thou may be healed. And I will, it's taken out of James, the fifth chapter, the sixteenth verse. But I want to read a couple other verses first. I want to go to uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and start at the eleventh verse, please. If someone give my wife a, a mic, that would help me. Uh, she tends to read for me, so if you can give her a mic, that would be very helpful. Four and eleven. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Now I want us to take a note of why he did it. He gave us pastors, he gave us prophets, he gave us teachers. And why did he do it? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come, till we all come in the unity into the, the unity faith, of the faith and of the knowledge, of the, knowledge of, the of the Son of God unto a perfect unto a man, perfect man unto, the measure, unto the, the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Of the fullness of Christ. So the whole purpose of me preaching, the whole purpose of this 10-day camp meeting, the whole purpose of us going to our individual uh, congregations and this minister standing up and preaching to us is for the perfecting of the saints. It's for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so we want to make that a, a very clear understanding that that's the purpose that we preach. We preach because there are things wrong with us. If we were to be honest with ourselves, there's a little something wrong with every person in here. All right? Uh, well, so Brother Darrell, we're saved and sanctified. I don't care how saved and sanctified we are. There's a little something wrong that the Lord is working on and the Lord is trying to, to, to perfect in us. And we need help. We need the Lord to give us, first of all, open it up, lay it out there, and so that we can see our need. And once we see our need, then we can do something about it. Uh, so let's be honest with ourselves, first of all, that there is something. I, I say it like this. I say things like this. There are things about you that you don't like, right? Uh, you, maybe you're a little too this or you're a little too that. Well, there are things about you that you don't like, and the Lord's working on those things. And I trust that you're working on those things as well. All right. So let's go from there and let's go to uh, the James, the fifth chapter, the 16th verse. Pray for us that we'll be able to get it out like the Lord wants us to. James 5, verse 16. James 5 and 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. So it's confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, one of the things that I say is our desire is not to go in and just confess our faults to anybody. Our faults need to be confessed in a safe environment. And your, your congregation, your pastor, there should be a safe environment. You should not hear what you say to somebody. You should not hear that on the pulpit. All right? You should not hear it in a testimony that somebody, well, that's what I said. Now, let me tell you something. I want to, I want to make certain that we have a clear understanding because there are some times that the Lord brings out. I've preached on things and I've touched things about people that I had no idea was going on in their lives. But the Lord, the Holy Spirit has a way to open it up and to lay bare the things that he wants us to deal with. All right, now that's different. If I preach on something that is just like what you talked about in your bedroom and you haven't told it anybody else, there is, that's between you and the Lord. That's between, that's not me. But if you've told me something and you've given me a clear, uh, uh, come to the altar and you've laid something out, that should be something that is, uh, uh, what's the word? Confident, in confidence. It's not something that I get up and I preach about and you know who I'm talking about. All right? That is something that hurts people, and we need to understand that we are not in the business of hurting people. Not, and the church is not in the business of hurting people. I've heard a lot of people say down through the years that they've been hurt by things that were said in the church. Let me tell you, sometimes we want to measure people up. We want to tell people what they can and cannot do as a result of them being saved. If you're saved, you can't do this. My, my, my thought out of 33 years of ministering and pastoring most of that time, what I've learned is the Lord has a way of measuring people up that I don't ever have to touch, and I never hurt them. 
I preach the principles. I preach the, the basics of what the Bible teaches. And then the Lord begins to deal with people and deal with their hearts. And ultimately, when the Lord deals with their hearts, it, they begin to make the change. And I don't have to go to them and tap them on the shoulder and say that you need to make a change here because you've got some issues, you've got some problems. May the Lord help us. We need to have that clarity and that understanding. Let the Lord do his job. I do my job. All right? All right, so it says here, confess your faults one for another. Continue to pray. Read that again, please. Confess your faults yes. one to another and pray one for another. Pray one for another that ye may, that be, ye may be healed. The effectual, the effectual, fervent, effectual prayer fervent prayer of a righteous man, of a righteous man availeth, availeth much. much. I want to go up to the 13th uh, verse. Let's go to the 13th verse and Is read now. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Let him pray. Is any merry? Is any merry? Let him sing, Let him sing psalms. psalms. Is any sick among you? Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let him church. call for the elders of the and church. Let them pray over him. And let them pray over him. Anointing him with, anointing oil, in him with oil in the, in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Shall save the and the, sick, Lord, shall raise and the him Lord shall raise him up. And if he hath committed, if he has sins, committed any sins, they shall be, they shall be forgiven him. Then it tells you to confess, confess your, faults your faults one, one to, to another, another pray one, pray for, one another, for another, that you, that may, you be may be healed. So what we want is healing. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for healing. And what we realize and what we understand, if I want to be healed, and there's a lot of things that are going on in people's lives that they need healing from. All right? Uh, some of us were born in good homes. I happened to be born in a good home where my mother and my father were both saved, and, and we had the the umbrella of, of the Holy Spirit upon our home. And that was a wonderful thing, right? Now, not all of my siblings uh, embraced it. Uh, not, I didn't embrace it at the very beginning. But at some point, the Lord got a hold of my heart. And there are things that I talk to people about today that when uh, before I gave my heart to the Lord, and I didn't get deep into sin, but before I gave my heart to the Lord, there are scars that are still that I'm still having to deal with, right? There are things that I did back in my past that I'm still, I still need healing from. There, When the memories come, I need healing from those things, right? And so let me tell you, if you have been deeply in sin or if your environment was quite different from mine, some of us were raised in very horrible environments. Our home environment was, was terrible. And as a result of that, the dysfunction in our home, that is going to have some impact on my home life now, my family life, or, uh, the person that I'm married to, my children. It's going to have some kind of impact on their lives as well. So we have to understand that. So we're trying to say, well, you know, I'm trying to do better, but I don't know, what, I don't know how to do better. Let me tell you, there is healing that needs to be done. There is some healing that you need the Lord to help you with. Lord, have mercy on me. There are some things about what I did in my past life that have affected me to right now and I want the Lord to heal me. That's what you pray for. You ask the Lord, Lord, give me the kind of healing that I need because I, but, but the first thing that I have to do, I have to understand that at some point, yes, I have the problems in my past, the problems and the dysfunction in my home, but at some point, I have to own up what I'm doing. I have to own up to what I'm doing, right? Yes, my father did this. Yes, this is how my mother treated me. But at some point, I can stop it right here, right? I don't have to continue it on to the next generation. So right now, here I am dealing with some issues, dealing with some problems that I'm, uh, that, that I'm going through. And what do I do? Well, you know what? That, that happened because of what the, my family did or what the church did or what somebody else did. At some point, I have to confess it. I have to say that the reason that I have this fault now is not because just because of what mom and daddy did, but because of what I am doing or what I'm failing to do. Right? Amen. Confess. There's confession. You know, in order for us to get saved, what do we have to do? Confess our sins. And we have to forsake our sins. What does it mean to confess your sins? What does it mean to confess your faults? It literally means I own them. All right. Now, yes, it passed down. But, and, and the problem is what my father, what your father, what the dysfunction in your family home could be is that it was passed down to them. So it's not their fault either. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can continue to pass the buck down from generation to generation. At some point it stops. And at some point I have to say, all right, it's me. It's me. It's me. Oh, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I am the problem. And when I come to the conclusion that I am the problem, then there is, that's where I can start the healing process. If I just say, you know, uh, this is just how I am, you guys are just going to have to deal with it. I've been like this all of my life. My daddy was like this. My grandpa was like this. And y'all are just going to have to deal with it. But let me tell you, there are problems that you're dealing with with other people. And you want them to make the change, don't you? 
And what I've learned is it is impossible for me to change who I am. It's impossible for me to change my character, but it's not impossible for God to change it for me. But what I have to do is I have to own up to it. I have to say, you know what, there's some problems with Daryl. There's some issues that I have, and I know them. I'm not going to confess them to this audience, but I've confessed them to others. And I've said, well, and, and let me tell you something. If you've been married for 38 years, you don't have to confess all your faults. Your wife is going to tell you some of them, right? And then you have to own up to it. Well, no, I'm not like that. That's not me. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, or, or better yet, let's say, well, yeah, I might be like that, but what about you? You've got some issues too. All right? And so what we do, we deflect it. We don't, we don't own up it. We don't confess my own fault. There is something wrong with me. Let me tell you why there's something wrong with all of us. Because there would not be a fruit of the Spirit that is called long-suffering if I didn't have to suffer for a long time with you. Right? With somebody. So we get a bunch of sanctified people together. And oh, they're going to, they're gonna, yes, it's unity. And I believe in that. I believe, but let me tell you, we get together and I happen to be a person. I've told you this before. I happen to be a person that the Lord's still working on my patience. While, while somebody's still thinking about it, they have the paralysis of analysis. I've got the job finished. Now you put that person and me together, we're going to have some problems, aren't we? I don't care how sanctified they are. I'm going to have to find some grace and they're, for them, and they're going to have to find some grace for me. So you know what I say? I say to myself, oh, Lord, I need, I need healing there. And so sometimes, you know, in order to get the healing, I own up to it. I have, I have a problem. And so I have to go to the Lord and I say, Lord, you know, sometimes I just say, you know what? I don't say anything. Just wait. See how long it takes. And don't, don't, don't tap your foot and Twiddle your thumbs, you just wait. You ask the Lord to give you the level of patience that you need and long-suffering that you need to be able to deal with this person. And the Lord has a way of doing that. He brings those trials to you. But what do we do? We confess your faults one to another. And then it says, pray one for another that you might be healed. Now, let me tell you what happens. You know, there are a lot of people that I'm not against counseling because I do it all the time. And if I am not in a position to counsel, uh, there, there's not a person that can give you godly counsel. Well, people have asked me, well, Brother Darrell, do you believe that a person can go to a counselor and, and, and get some help? Well, I have to say, now, I don't know what the rest of the brethren would say, but I have to say, you know, if that's what you need, do it. But get a Christian counselor, somebody that the Lord, that, that, that has some kind of history with the Lord. But best of all, best of all, what I want to say is you can go directly to the Lord for yourself. And if you don't know how to go to the Lord, go to somebody that does know how to go to the Lord. And then you make that confession. You lay on the proverbial couch, a psychiatrist's couch, and you begin to confess all of your faults. And you begin to say, Lord, this is what I need. I need healing. I need help. I'm, I'm going through something that I, sometimes I don't even understand what I'm going. Sometimes you don't understand what you're going through, do you? Why am I going through this? I don't know why you're going through that. There have been times that I could not answer the questions that the people had in their mind, but I could take it to the Lord who knew all the answers. Isn't that wonderful? So it says, confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. You know, one of the things that I say about that, a doctor, we can do whatever we want to. We believe in divine healing. We also believe that the doctors can do something to facilitate healing, right? If you get a... a, a scar or, or cut, break your arm, you go, you go and you have it set, right? In order for it to be healed properly, it has to be set. And if there's a wound there, it has to be cleaned out. You have to take care of it, right? Well, we have to understand that even though we do those things, pray for us, the doctor cannot heal. What do I mean by that? No one can heal but God. You put the, the bone back together, and all they can do is wrap it up, hold it still, tell you what to do. But ultimately, there is something that takes place down in, within your body that begins to heal itself, right? It heals itself. And let me tell you, the body of Christ heals itself. There have been wounds. Yes, there have been wounds. And I want to say, if somebody in the church has hurt you, there have been wounds. Don't run away. Don't run away from the church. This is where you can get some help. If you can't get help there, go to somebody else and get some help. And confess your, what you did. Because oftentimes what I've learned, what I've learned in situations when there are issues with people, there are things that I have done, my inaction or what I said often affects what somebody else says. 
and what somebody else does. And so there is a portion of it. I've never seen, maybe you've heard me say this, but I've never seen in, in any kind of uh, uh, situation that I've been in where one person was 100% wrong and the other person was 100% right. It may be 95-5, it may be 90-10, uh, 80-20, uh, uh, something, but at some point you've done something that helped to facilitate where you are. Oh yeah, your mother did it. Your father, back in, your, in their day, how they raised you was horrible. And I hated every bit of it and all that. You know what, I say this oftentimes. My father was a, a really hard worker. And uh, he taught his sons. We had six, five brothers, six boys of us. And we were country boys. We had a hog pen. Y'all know something about hogs? <laughs> hog pen, cows, hauled hay, all that kind of stuff. I know them, them ex know about that kind of stuff. We did that. And do you know what? We thought my father was abusive. We really did. Because all of our friends, we'd get up before the sun, do all of the work, and then go to school. And then after school, we had to do it again. And on Saturdays, we had to do it. We were out there working all day. And do you know what? I thought, man, when I get 18, I'm out of here. And do you know the best thing that ever happened to me was what my dad made me do? Because it made a man out of me. It made me, right now, I, you can give me a job that I hate to do, I don't want to do it, and I can get it done. I don't find an excuse not to do it. It's the best thing that happened to it. So did I feel hurt back then? Yes, I felt hurt back then. But when I matured and I got to a certain age, I came to the understanding that these are the things that I needed. I need it. These are the things that made me the man that I am today, the things that I hated. Let me tell you something about the church. There are going to be people in the church that are going to say things that they, don't, they shouldn't say to you. Don't run away from it. Don't run away from them. Come to them. I've been in situations. I remember one time that, uh, and we could, I remember one time there were some people that were very close to me that, that hurt me very deeply. And um, I, I, I didn't even want to be around them. Oh, yeah, and I'm a preacher. This didn't happen before I got saved. This happened after I got saved. I'm a preacher. And I'm saying, Lord, I cannot get up there and preach on Sunday morning about forgiveness if I can't forgive. And I tried to do it, but I could not do it. And I had to go to the Lord, and I had to pour it out to the Lord, and I had to ask the Lord, Lord, what it was it about me? What did I do to facilitate or to, to contribute to what they're doing? What did I do? And the Lord began to show me and give me a clarity and understanding on my part. And when I humbled myself, let me tell you, everything worked out. Why? Because I made a confession. Didn't make it to everybody. I made it to the Lord. And then when I needed to go to that person and I needed to say, you know what? I'm sorry for what I did. And I, it's not a general apology. It's a specific apology. This is what I did. I shouldn't have done it. And if there's something else that you see that I should have done differently, I want you to let me know that because I want to change. I want the Lord to change me. And I want our relationship to change. I don't want to be hurt with you anymore. I didn't run away from that person. I, did not, I didn't decide that I'm not going to talk to you and you don't have to I don't have to say a word to you the rest of your life I felt I have felt that way about people oh brother Darrell you ain't supposed to be getting up in monarch saying that kind of stuff <laughs> yes I am that's it's true I, there was one person that hurt me so deeply that I felt like you know if I if I, when I see him at this thought actually came to my mind if I see him at his funeral that's the that's a day too soon <gasps> oh Lord and he's saved <laughs> He's saved and, saved and sanctified. Now, do you think the Lord let me get away with that for too long? No, he didn't. The Lord made me deal with that. I had to deal with it, but let me tell you. Do you know the reason I'm telling you these kinds of things? I say these kinds of things to you because I think sometimes that you put us here way up here on a, on a pedestal, and you don't think that we understand what you're going through. But we, we, as I say, there's something wrong with all of us. There are things that God wants to do with every one of us. And I don't want, I, I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that we all can be hurt and we can all be hurt deeply by those that we love. And what I want to say to you, don't run away from them. And so in this situation, when that thought pops into my mind, is that a God thought? Is that something that God would be pleased with? And I clearly understand, no, it is not something that God be, it would be pleased with. So therefore, if I'm expecting to get into his heaven, I'm going to have to do something a little different, aren't I? Yeah. 
So I'm after going, I'm going to say, Lord, forgive me for that. Forgive me for having the thought, allowing the devil to present that thought to my mind because it's not something that you would have me to do. So therefore, I'm going to think differently, and I'm asking you, I'm confessing this. I'm, I'm making a confession to you because I need healing. This hurts me. What they said, what they did, what they didn't do, how they didn't support me, how they didn't do the things that they should have done, or how they did something that they, whatever it was, Lord, I'm hurt. And I need healing. And you're the only one that can heal me. But I have something to do with my healing. If you don't, if you got a splinter in your finger, in your hand, and you're not allowing somebody to dig it out, no matter how hurtful it is, how hard it is to get to it, it is never going to heal. But we need the healing, don't we, saints? All right. So we take ownership of the problem. So probably most of you know, probably preached on it here before, probably most of you know that I'm blind in one eye. So what are the eyes? I won't tell you which one, particularly little kids that come up. One of my eyes is completely false. So if you come and look at it and you can tap on it, I can pull it out, I can put it back in. I can, children love to see it. <laughs> but I had an injury that was about, about almost 35 years ago, I had an injury. And uh, it uh, took the sight. And one of the things that I've learned to do is I protect my eyesight in a way that I never had before, ne never did before. If I had protected it then, I'd still be able to see out of both eyes. But these glasses are safety glasses. They don't look like safety glasses, but they're polycarbonate lenses. And the reason I do that is because if something hits it now, it's very difficult to nearly impossible to break it. So everything that I, every pair of glasses that you'll ever see me wear from now until the time that I die will be safety glasses. I don't take them off very often. Uh, I keep them on because it protects me. And the reason I'm bringing this point out is because uh, when we have been hurt, we often protect ourselves. So we say, I'm not going to ever be hurt like that again. And so that I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to protect myself. So I'm going to close off to everybody and no one is going to be able to get to me ever again. Because I've been hurt too much. And I want to say to you that that is not the way to go. That the way to go, yes, you protect yourself, but you don't close yourself off to everybody. There are people that can help you. If you're hurt today, there are people right here that can help you, that love you. There's something about the love of God's people that just covers everything. All of us want to be loved. There's not a person here that doesn't want somebody to wrap their arms around them and tell them, I love you. There's not a person here that does not want somebody want to have the understanding, not just the words that are, that are going on in their, that, are, that are coming to their ears, but they want to be shown up. That's one of the reasons that people come to Monarch. So I want to say, I want to say this to you. Be very careful when you deal with people when, you, when they come here. Not just when they come here, when they go to, when they go to uh, uh, in their own congregation, in your own congregation. You know, you, well, I just told them the truth. Well, you know what the scripture says? Speaking the truth how? In love. There are some times that you don't need to speak the truth. There are some times that you just need to allow it to happen however it is. Just wrap your arms around them and tell them how much you love them. And then at some point in the future, you can speak the truth to them. But not right now because you haven't shown them love. Well, I just, I've, I've had people like this. I just told them like it is. Brother Darrell, you're just too whatever. You're just, but you know what? Let me, tell you what I, let me tell you what I've learned. I learned that a pastor is different from a preacher. I've been both. And I've learned that a father, is, a mother is different from a father. Now, I've never been a mother, but I have been a father for quite some years. But there is a tenderness about the mother's love that I just cannot have as a father. Boy, get up. You just skint your knee. Be a boy. Get up. You, you're going to be okay. That's what we say, right? And the mama said, come here, baby. Come here. <laughs> and she grabs him. And, hold, and who does he run to? He doesn't run to the daddy that says, get up. I think the child needs both of them, right? I think they do. That's why the Lord gave it to them. 
But they run to the mama when she says, baby, come here. He puts him on, on her laps and hugs him and kisses him and all these kinds of things. Well, you're just spoiling that boy. He's just going to be a wimp, whatever it is. But you just, you, mama just says, leave him alone. I need to give him some love. Now, let me tell you, that's how it needs to be sometime in the church, right? In the church, when somebody falls down and skin their knee, well, they needed to be told that. No, get up and let's come here, baby. Let, let, us, hold, let us hold you. Let me let, let you know how much we love you right here in this place. One of the things that people respond to is love and the love that you have. Now, does, that, does love mean that you don't have discipline? No, part of whom the Lord loveth, what does he do? He chasteneth. So there's going to be some chastening that you're going to have to go through. There's going to be some time, but there is a time to chasten and there's a time to love a person. There's some time that you don't. You know what? One of the things that we did with our children is that if they were going to tell us the truth, we did not, uh, we, we did, if, if we needed them to confess and lay something bare, we did not reprove them at that particular moment. So in other words, we come, okay, so tell me what happened. Oh, you're not going to get a whipping. They're reluctant until you tell them that. You're not going to get a whipping. Just tell me what happened. Well, he did such and such, and I did such and such. So we needed to know that information that we wouldn't have gotten the full story had we disciplined them at that particular time. And so we don't discipline them. Sometimes it's okay not to discipline your child at that moment, right? But they have an understanding. Okay, now, son, this is what you needed to do, and this is what you should have done. Now, if you want to add that on to something else later on, you can do that later on. But don't do it right now. All right, this is something that you say in your mind. Little, little man here, my son needs some kind of discipline, and the discipline that he needs is that uh, when he does this particular thing again, I am going to talk to him about that because that's a little, that's a little character flaw that I see in him. And that he needs to understand that this is not, mom and dad is not going to be okay with that. So whatever that is, so I think sometimes we may feel like, oh, Lord, I want, I want, to, uh, uh, I want, to, I want to lay down the hammer on somebody. You don't need to lay down the hammer on them. This is not the time to do that. Do you understand? That's why you have pastors. And sometimes we, I've, I've seen people, I've been in situations where somebody wants to do the correction because they don't feel like I'm doing it quick enough. Have you ever seen that? Brother Darrell, he just such and such and such. Or that pastor so-and-so, he just such and such. Let me tell you something. We have our fingers on the pulse of the congregation. The Lord gives us a congregation to pastor. We have our fingers on the pulse of that congregation, and we know what's needed. And we, we you know, even, even in situations like this, my wife said, well, why don't, why don't you, why don't you situate this? It's not the time to do it right now. It's just like, just like I tell her, why did you whip that boy? That ain't the time to whip him right now. And I submit to that. May the Lord help us. Y'all still with me? All right, all right. Okay, so, uh, so one of the things that I'd like to say, I, I said the injury to my eye, it makes me see things different. Maybe I've shared it with you before. But I do not see things the way you see them because of my injury. And most of the time that I've seen in people's lives, uh, when they've been injured in certain ways, they see things differently. And so you have to understand that. You have to understand that they're not looking at things the same way that you're looking at them. You know, you know what, what I, I've, 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 I, I've, I've said this since I've lived in California for the last three years. And Californians think differently than people in the Midwest. They really do. You, you, you've heard me say it probably. and You're going to hear me say it again. They think differently because of what they, how they were conditioned, I say. And it's not a bad thing. It's just a different thing. And so when you understand that, and so in order to go out into California and minister to Californians, you can't stop, start mid-sentence like you do here. Well, people have an understanding of the, uh, of, of the gospel. They have an understanding of the truth and all these kind of things. There are some ways that, you, and not, not, I'm not saying that you, we, we do it so much here because it's probably not a good idea for us to do it here. We need to start at the very beginning, Right? All right, this is how we do it, and we follow through all the way to give them a clarity and an understanding of what the gospel message is all about, or what it means when we talk about healing. What does it mean for me to be healed? For us to say, uh, you, you know, uh, pray for one another that you may be healed. So if you see a problem in another brother, our responsibility is not to talk about that brother. Our responsibility is to pray for that brother. 
that brother needs healing or that person needs healing. You don't know what their home life is. When people come off the streets and they're here among us, we don't have to. Let me tell you what I, I do not do. And you can, y'all can talk to me and pull me over to the side. I don't try to measure them up the same day that they get in. What I try to do is I try to give them the principles of the gospel. You understand what the gospel and let everybody come in here and let everybody love you and everybody you're going to get some love here. The thing that I've told the folks in, in California as well in Texas, what I told them is, listen, the reason people, don't, the only reason that I want people to say they don't want to come back to this church is because the people loved on them too much. Everybody lined up to say hello to me. Let me tell you what I've seen among us sometimes. I've seen that a, a visitor comes in and no one speaks to him. No one says anything. They're not, it's as though we get in our little huddles of the people that we know that we saw last Sunday and that we'll see next Sunday. No, the one that I want you to talk to is that one right there that you've never seen before. Tell me about your life. Tell me something about you. Let me know how, let, I want you to know how much we appreciate you being here. You didn't have to do that today. That's the most important person that will ever walk into your sanctuary. A person that's never been there before. A person that, that feels out of place and a person that's looking for a home. Why did they come there in the first place? They're looking for home. Lord, help us. So make them feel at home. Make them feel loved. Make them feel like this is the best place and these are the people that I want to be with for the rest of my life. We don't have to tell them what the do's and the don'ts and what they can and cannot do. May the Lord help us. This is what the Lord gave me. So, so I say it, it's, uh, I don't see things. I don't see depth of perception. I, I can't see it. I remember when it first happened, I couldn't tell how far things were away from me. Uh, so a lot of things like that. A lot of things that people that are hurt are not going to see things the way you see them. Well, I, it's plain as day. Well, I know what how color this songbook is. I know what color everything is. I can see exactly like you. 20-20 vision with this in, in one eye. But I don't have the depth. I can't see down things that are, things that are, I can't discern, shall we say, distance. I can't discern some things. And there's something that I want you to know. There are some things, the things that you've heard, that you've dealt with, the things that have been in your background. There are some things that you're not going to be able to discern. Because it takes a person that's not hurt to do that. It takes a restoral of your eyesight. It takes a restoral in order for you to be able to deal with it in the way that the Lord wants you to deal with it. And sometimes you're going to need help. So it says, pray one for another that you may be healed. I believe all of us want healing, don't we? I believe that there's a place in every one of our lives that we need healing. I believe there's a place in the church that where we need healing. I heard the brothers say that, you know, there's some that uh, felt like they've been hurt by the, and I've heard this so many times. Uh, but I say it like this. I say, you know what? I don't believe that any person that has been married for any length of time can say that they did not cross some things that could have broken them up if they would have allowed it to happen. All right? You've been married for 50 years. Don't tell me that there's, that, that all we've had has been a perfect Situation all the way through. No, you are two different personalities coming from two different backgrounds. And there are things that you can allow to happen and come between you if you allow it to happen. But what happens is, what I've learned is when, when, uh, when there is a disagreement, when there is something that, that could uh, pull us apart, the thing for us to do is to pull together. That's what I want us to do. As, as a church, as, a, as a, a relationship that you have with your husband, with your wife, with your children, go toward them, not away from them. I haven't spoken to my brother in 15 years because of something that he did. We've forgotten about that. Forgive your brother. What, what difference does it make? You're, you're missing out on something. May the Lord help you to see that. And now all of a sudden, uh, he's going his way and you're going your way. And we don't care about each other. But you still have the hurt in your heart. You still need healing. And there can be things like that in the church that if we're not careful, uh, well, we just split up and we go there and we don't worship with these people anymore because of what they go together. Lord, help us. Amen. All right. All right, let's go to Proverbs 27, verse 6. We're moving toward our conclusion. Appreciate your patience. Proverbs 27, verse 6. Proverbs 27 and 6, faithful. 
For the wounds of a friend. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Kisses of an enemy are deceitful. So sometimes people are going to tell you things that hurt. Have, have, have you ever had your feelings hurt? Should you go around moping? Oh, they hurt my feelings. They didn't have to say it like that. And they probably didn't have to say it like that. But if they're a friend, faithful are the wounds of a friend. I, wanted, I want you to tell me what's wrong with me. And I want to be honest with myself. And this is where the problem is with many of us. We're not honest with ourselves. We see ourselves in, uh, we make excuses for where we are. We make excuses for what we've done. We make excuses for how we've done it, how, how we are. And the Lord is saying, I want, if somebody comes up to you and tells you something about yourself, I want you to confess that. And I want you to ask for prayer. I don't want you to feel like, oh, they just traumatized me. They made me feel horrible. May the Lord help us. Let's go to another scripture, Proverbs, the 28th chapter, 13th verse. Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso confesseth, but whoso confesseth and, forsaketh and forsaketh them, them shall, have mercy. shall have mercy. So you know what? I, I've learned something about a, a simple... I'm sorry, goes a long way. What does it, what does it do? It's just a couple of words. I'm sorry. Or I'm so sorry. Just a few words, but there's such a soothing. There's something soothing about it. That if you don't say it, it affects you in another way. It can get infected, can it? Your, 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 whatever wound that's there can get infected. But when somebody says, I'm sorry, it seems like it cleans it all up and now I can heal. May the Lord, is there somebody that you need to say I'm sorry to? Is there somebody in the audience or somebody at home or somebody in, in your life, in your past that you've hurt and you felt like that's just the way that I am and you, you haven't said I'm sorry yet and it's affecting that person. May the Lord help you to be willing to do whatever it takes to, be, uh, to humble yourself and pray, Lord, I, I need prayer. And maybe sometimes you need the Lord to help you. You need somebody to come down and pray, give me the courage to be able to humble myself and say, I'm sorry to this person, even though that person hurt me. But what did you do? Lord, help us. Okay. So I've heard somebody say this, and I'll just say this in closing. It says, if you're hurting, hurt people tend to hurt people. And then I said, I thought of it like this. If you got a, 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 a little wounded animal and you corner it, you know what's going to happen? You're trying to help that animal, but that animal doesn't know that you, if he doesn't know that you're trying to help him, he's going to come at you, right? And so sometimes the people come at us not because uh, they're upset at us, because, but they're afraid that you might touch that tender spot again. And so therefore, you're, you're coming trying to bind up the wounds and bind up the broken heart. You're trying to do that, but they're coming at you with all force, so to speak. If a person does that, you know what? You step back, you pray, and go at them again with love. Show them that you love them and that you're going to be there for them. And it doesn't matter what they say, what they do, you're not going to abandon them because they need you and you need them. I see that. I see people just leaving and going, uh, uh, you go your direction and I go to my direction. Why do I do that? Because you hurt me. And I'm hurt and I, and I don't know what to do with it, but may the Lord help us. The Lord wants to heal your hurts today. You, he wants to heal you. And let me tell you, if you've got a physical sickness and there are issues in your spiritual life, you need to make a confession to those as well and the Lord will, will heal that ye may be healed. Because if you're trying to uh, 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 cover up your sins or cover up your faults, and you're just saying, well, that's just the way that I am, Brother Darrell, and I'm just like that, and y'all just going to have to deal with it, the Lord's not going to be able to help you on that. You cannot help somebody that doesn't want help, right? I mean, you can go to a psychiatrist, and psychiatrist lay on his couch, and you start talking to him about, uh, 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 he asks you questions, and you, you, you don't answer those questions. You, you don't talk to him. He's not going to be able to help you, is he? Well, if you go to the Lord and you don't tell the Lord, you don't make a confession of the things that you've done, the things that you have caused, some of the hurts that you've caused in your own life, some of the problem that's going on in your life are because of you. It's not because of somebody else. Own up to it. Yeah, my daddy was like that, but your daddy is dead now. 
He's not nowhere around. What are you going to do with how you are? Yes, I inherited. I'm just like I'm just like my father. Well, so what? Now you own it. Confess that to the Lord, and then the Lord will do something about it. The healing will begin. Let me tell you, there's a process of healing, isn't it? It doesn't. Uh, sometimes there's instantaneous healing, but I've never really seen a lot of instantaneous healings. Not even in the situations that I'm talking about. But what I do see is that the Lord has the ability to heal you, whatever it is, whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances in your life are, whatever your history is, however much dysfunction you have in your history, the Lord has the ability to heal it, and he wants to heal it today. Amen. Whatever happened in your congregation, whatever happened with the church, the Lord wants to heal that right now because let me tell you who's, who has the problem. You have the problem. Yeah. Let me tell you, you're part of a body. I can't cut my finger off and say, you know, because, because the rest of my hand did something, I'm going to cut my finger off and, and I'm going to go over here. You know what's going to happen to a finger that's separated from the body? It's going to die. Yes. It's already dead. You've got just a little bit of time to reattach it back to the body, back to the hand, before it loses life completely. There are some of us that need confession. We need to be healed. We need the Lord to heal us. We've gone through some very hurtful things. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, they hurt you at that church. Yes, they should know they shouldn't have done it, but they did. Now, what did you do? What do you do? What do you say? How do you handle that? How do you deal with that? The Lord wants you to be healed today, not tomorrow. Today, let the process start. May the Lord help us pray for me.
445. Asking it shall be given you, brother. He is the Lord who careth for all. Come with your heart all broken and bleeding. Come, he will hear and answer your call. Hurry and pray. we heard today is a real treasure. This is a real treasure. God has healing for each of us in our minds, in our hearts, and in our bodies. I was grown up here. I've been healed myself, physically healed from the Lord, mentally healed from the Lord. God hasn't changed. I was Praying recently. God, we need a healing. Physical healing. There's people that I, I love. I have a lot of confidence in that are struggling. They haven't got healing. I was praying, Lord, we need healing. God said, I'm withholding my hand. I'm withholding my hand. Because I am not number one in the church. Pray for me. I said, oh Lord, help me, search me. I want you to be number one. I'm sorry, God, that I've not kept you as number one. The word says, if you confess your faults, you will be healed. If you need to confess, here's an altar to pray with people full of love to confess. Lord, help us to keep you as number one. Lord only wants one place, and that is number one. That's where he wants to be. If he's not number one, church, God wants to fix that. He's still there. Let's let him be. Number one in our lives. Hurry and tell what tongue cannot utter. Brooding and sighing, loaded with care. Bruised and weak with that in you fall. Tell him he waits your burdens to bear. Hurry and tell him, brother and sister, Jesus so tender, loving as mine. Waiting to come, bless him. 
worry and tell him every affliction. Tell him each pain and sorrow of heart. Here is the word of power is given. Lo, I am with you, never to part. Hurry and tell him, brother and sister, Jesus so tender, so loving and kind.